welcome back. Today we have my favorite podcaster and author, Zibby Owens. I'm so excited to have her on this show today. She has been my favorite go-to listen every morning on her podcast. I love just hearing all the different authors and stories of books. And basically she does kind of what I do over here on Amazon over on her podcast. So if you like this show, you're definitely going to want to go over and follow her and it's at moms don't have time to read books if you want to put that in the chat and that's my that's for my moderator <laughs> so <laughs> let's introduce yourself tell us a little about you and kind of what you've been up to oh well erin thank you so much for having me this is so much fun and it's so great to talk to somebody who loves doing what i do i mean i'm like so <laughs> passionate about what i do like you know i feel like i could talk to you for hours um, but I have a podcast that I started in March of 2018. It's called Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. And I interview authors seven days a week for about 30 minutes um, at a time so that everybody has time to listen. And I'm a mom for, and I, uh, I love books. And I just wanted to start something where everybody could enjoy getting to know the story behind the story. And I started it kind of on a lark and it's grown into this whole big thing and it's inspired Lots of other things, including anthologies I've come out with, and I have books coming out, and um, I had two other podcasts, and I started a magazine on Medium called Moms Have Time to Write, and I have a retreat coming up. I've just like spun this off into all different directions, so it's been great. That is amazing. So for those of you that haven't heard of Zibby or her book, she has a great anthology that is awesome. I had this idea that I would leave it in my car and read it a little bit every day at car carpool pickup. And then I read it in one night. Oh. <laughs> so I'm still going to put it in the car because I do think it's good to go back to. Some of them made me laugh. Some of them made me cry. And I linked it in the carousel for you guys to go ahead and grab. It just is so good. I feel like what a weird couple of years we've all been through and to kind of see how others went through it and on different things. So she breaks it down into categories, which had me in stitches laughing for some of these and then some of these not sad. They were sad, but moms don't have time to read, work out, eat, have sex, breathe, and just great. And so I would be surprised. I would pull up a different section and then it was another author I knew. So it was really fun just to read you know, we read these great books and we're entertained, but then we forget there's real people behind these and they're real work and this is their art and this is their passion. And so getting to read a little bit behind the scenes has been super fun. And so I know you have another one coming out too. I do. It's called Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids and that comes out November 2nd. Uh, and yes, it actually, both of them stemmed from the fact that I would interview people and I would want to hear more. Or they would say something like, oh, well, when I ran my marathon or whatever, and I'm like, oh, go back. I want to hear more about that. Like, tell me about running. Tell me. But there's only so much time in my podcast. So the essays were a way for me to tap into some of the things I wanted to hear selfishly, like more about, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And I picked things I just didn't think moms had time to do. And so for the second anthology, I wrote about moms that don't have time to sleep, get sick, see friends, lose weight, and write. Love that. So I pulled that up on the carousel and you guys can go ahead and pre-order that. If you don't know about the pre-order feature here on Amazon is you can go ahead and order it today and it won't charge you yet until you, until the day of, and it'll be in your mailbox that day or soon after. And so that is awesome. You can get, I believe you can get the E format and the physical copy, right? In paperback. I think so. Yeah, I, th I think that one was in paperback. Yeah, I remember, I'm, right? pause. I'm like 99% positive. Yes. Yeah. Um, I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to read that one now. Oh, I, you can, I just, get, you can get the, I recorded my own audiobook for the first one. So you can listen to that as well if you're really busy. Oh, that is awesome too. And you recorded that? I did. That is awesome. Oh, I love that. When authors record their own audiobooks, I love it. I love that too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really picky about audiobooks, and I really love it when it's really narrated well and kind of puts that personal touch on it. And so you wrote that, and then you also, I don't know if you can talk about it, but I've seen little snippets here and there, so I'm assuming you can. You have your memoir coming. Is that true? I do. In fact, a, a draft of edits is due Friday, and I'm like, how am I going to do this? But uh, it's called The Book Messenger. And yes, it's a memoir. Um, and it really speaks to 
finding my voice, going through loss, you know, realizing who I was, divorce, debt. I mean, now actually it's sounding depressing. Let me change this around. But it's basically how I, and how I found myself through books and how books have been sort of the vines on which I've swung to get me through life and how grateful I am for that. So I mentioned a lot of different books as in parallel to my story. And um, I don't know, I've had this crazy life. And so I thought I would write about it. And I love reading memoirs. So I've always kind of run it to write one. Um, so I'm really, yeah, I'm excited. And it's also coming out from Amazon Publishing, speaking of Amazon. So it's nice. Really okay. But, and yeah. that is September of next year? That's in July. Oh, in July. Okay. But I have a children's book coming out in between in April, okay. and that's called Princess Charming. And it's coming out from Flamingo, which is a Penguin Random House imprint. And I'm actually doing a cover reveal um, this Wednesday for Princess oh, Charming. So stay tuned at CB Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books on Instagram, and we will be unveiling the cover. <laughs> that is awesome. If you guys are not following, if you guys – listening to this have never listened to a podcast. I know a lot of people, they just don't know where to go. They don't know what to listen to. I'm a Spotify girl and I just pull it up and I only subscribe to like three or four podcasts, but I love going through all the books that Zibby talks about because they're just bite size. I don't have time for a whole hour and a half long podcast. Although sometimes I listen to yours and I'm like, I wish you would have gone longer. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, maybe that's a great thing. That means shows you're doing a good job because people want more, but they are bite-sized pieces. So if I go on like a 30 minute walk, I know I can get a whole Zibby podcast in. So if you guys are busy, need something in the carpool, need something on your exercise or just cleaning the kitchen, it's an easy one to listen to and you'll love getting book ideas. I think I just listened to one recently that I, well, two of them. One was My Year with Salinger. I cannot, cannot remember. But that was the best interview. And after that, I was like, I got to get her book when it comes. She's so good. I love her. Joanna Rakoff is amazing. She joined my book club. She's been just fantastic. I adore her. And my sure. son is also a movie now too, so you can watch it. I know. I'm really excited about that. And then you did another one and her name was Karen, I'll probably say it wrong, Tanabi. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Karen yeah, that, yeah. That was a really good one too. I was like, I got to get that book now. <laughs> yeah. She wrote A Woman of Intelligence about a 1950s Fifth Avenue housewife in New York City and how she had all this extra brain power that she essentially wasn't using and ends up becoming a spy. I know that was her interview was really great too. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, Wait, my dog is here. I guess your dog bark, and now my dog's freaking out. So anyway, oh my gosh, that's no, hilarious. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, that's my Instacart delivery, real life. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I cannot. I love your title too, the book messenger. I cannot even. I, someone described you in a post recently somewhere. You're basically no. I was in an interview with a publicist, and she said. Uh, so you're kind of like Zibby Owens. And I was like, Oh, well, that's, that's a really great compliment. Okay. And she Aww. said, she's basically the fairy godmother of all books. And I'm like, Aww. she is, she that's really so is. Nice. That is so nice. So that's how people talk about you behind your back. That's amazing. And you are loved. Aww. Um, so have you always loved books? Is this a, like a, it, did you start, was this a childhood thing? What made you fall in love with books? It's been my entire life since I first started reading. Um, I write about this in my memoir, but uh, the first book I remember that really affected me was Charlotte's Web. And I remember crying and when at the end and thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't know books could make me cry, that they could make me feel this much. And it was this amazing feeling. I don't know, I was like eight years old. And since then, I just like haven't stopped reading. I also started writing letters to authors when I was 10 years old. So I was like, had like pen pal relationships with some authors, including this woman, Zibby O'Neill, because I was like, oh my God, another author named Zibby. This is so cool. Uh, she was a middle grade author when I was young. And so we would like write back and forth. And then after a couple of years, she came to New York City and took me to tea at the plaza. <laughs> Get out. Do you still have the letters? You know, I tried to find them the other day and I was like, mom, what did you do with those letters? Anyway, we couldn't find them. Um, I oh, that would have been so cute. <laughs> they must be somewhere. And I, you know, 
maybe at some point, but I did like look very, very hard to find them. I can still see them. They were on this like light blue, like folded over stationary, handwritten. And, you know, she was from Michigan and I would always get so excited to see the little thing that it was a letter from Michigan. So, I mean, literally when I went to tea with an author, I thought I had like died and gone to heaven. I was like, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. That's awesome. Ever. And now, and I still sort of have that like giddy feeling about authors that I don't have, like, yeah, celebrities, whatever, you know, but I'm much more like enamored with authors. I just feel like what they do is like magic. They take me on these amazing journeys and it's so hokey, but I really feel like that. I get, I have so much respect and, um, and I feel like that's why I want to give back. Like books have helped me so much and, um, and I wanted to get to know the authors more. So anyway. That is awesome. So do you, so you are, a fi do you write fiction too? I have, but I am not that good at it. Um, so I prefer, my favorite thing to do is write personal essays. I write personal essays all the time. And um, I have a magazine type thing, publication on Medium called Moms Don't Have Time to Write. So I've been doing a lot for them. Um, I post on like for Thrive Global and various magazines. And I also am a contributor to Good Morning America. So I write my book recommendations up for them every month, um, which is exciting. So I love writing like that. I have written a couple unpublished novels, um, which I'm glad I did as like thought experiments. Um, I'm not saying I won't try again, but I am not particularly good at it as far as I can tell. <laughs> I think you're probably better than you think. <laughs> I'm just guessing. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, to become good at writing novels, you have to write a bunch of novels, right? Like the more you do, the better you'll get. And I don't love it the way I love writing essays or nonfiction. I love doing that. I do that all the time. I think that's how I think. Um, I don't have that same pull to write fiction in the, in the same way. So I haven't like improved as much. Um, but who knows? Life is long. I mean, you, never, you never know. You never know. Uh, so your upcoming children's book, who illustrated it? A woman named Holly Haddam, who's fantastic. Um, and it's so cute the way she did it. And there's sort of a mix of like little photographic elements and illustration. And um, yeah, she's just amazing. So for those of you watching too, you can pull up Zibby Owens on Amazon and follow her. That really helps authors when you follow them because when they have a new product come out or new book, new memoir, you can always grab it. So I recommend hitting that button and following Zibby. And so then you'll know you won't miss out on her children's book. I would have linked it. I looked for it and I looked for your memoir. Sometimes they're up on Amazon that early on, but yeah, neither. Yeah. Um, I think it's supposed to be up. They're trying to time it to this Wednesday cover reveal situation. So we'll see if that works. But um, that is so exciting. What do your kids think of you and what you're doing? Do they think it's pretty cool? Oh my gosh. Yes. It's so great. I mean, um, you know, sometimes I'll catch my little guys. Well, I used to like when they were even smaller, but they would like take a pretend microphone and hide in the corner and be like, I'm Zippy Owens and you're listening to moms don't have time to read books. <laughs> so cute. Um, now they're a little bit older. I have a six year old and eight year old and 14 year old twins. Um, and wow. my, my daughter, my 14 year old twin daughter, um, is like so into the social media aspect of everything. So literally like I just got verified on Instagram last week <laughs> and I called, she's like the only person I called. Like I was like, Oh my God. And she's like, mama, that's amazing. <laughs> so, that is awesome. I, after I saw yours, I was like, I should do that too. And I submitted mine. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I think you have to, I have a professional account. I think you have to have a professional yeah. account. Anyway. Um, so so yeah. that is they're, awesome. They're, they're big fans. And they, sometimes they interview people with me, which I love. <laughs> my kids, uh, well, my, I have a YouTube channel and my daughter will be watching YouTube and one of my videos will show up, show up as like a for you page and she'll go, mom, I saw you on YouTube. <laughs> you know what? So I have, I have, um, I started this other podcast. It's called Sex Talk with Zibby and Tracy. And don't mm -hmm. even ask why I did this. I just thought it'd be funny. First, it was called Moms Enough Time to Have Sex. But then we changed the name because we became sort of viral on TikTok. I saw that. And I watched that. And I was like, oh, Zibby, you spicy. I, I, I am so embarrassed. That I think that's what makes the show funny. Because I cannot talk about this stuff at all. And, and I interview this sex expert, international sex expert, who's written 17 books. 
Um, and like, I just like cringe. So she's like, she sends me the questions that come in through the website. And I'm like, I cannot read this out loud. Anyway, my son's friend came <laughs> over for dinner the other night and he was like, Hey, you know, you showed up on my for you page. And it was like, you know, my husband cheated on me, which was not me. It was one of the questions. Anyway, it's sort of mortifying and I don't know why I do it, but I love it. So I'm going to stick with it for now. When you posted that about your son's friend, I died a little. I was like, oh my gosh, that's the funniest thing. It's ridiculous. it's ridiculous. And the other night I'm like at some dinner party and this like old family friend is like, you were on my For You page too. Then I'm like, what are these people following that this is what's coming up on their For You page, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you can't laugh at it, what can you do? Yeah. So I, you gave me a list of awesome books to that you're loving right now. And I thought we'd just kind of talk about those real quick. So you said you loved, and you're not the first person to tell me that you love this book. So I, I need to absolutely put it on my list is Between Two Kingdoms. And I pulled that up on the thing. What'd you love about that book? Why is, what, why is everybody talking about that book? <laughs> you know what? I was wondering the same thing because it didn't like call out to me from the shelf. I was like, what is this? I don't know. It's, but it is beautifully written. And it is all about like the interior life of someone who is going through um, cancer treatments. But it's it's more about that. It's about spirituality. It's about resilience and what happens next. It's like an inside look that I've never gotten quite so detailed. And she was writing for the New York Times at the time. So she was documenting it. So she had all this stuff about it. Um, but it wasn't just a chronicle of an illness because I've read plenty of other books that are good, by the way, all really good about chronicling illnesses. This was something else. It was the combination of like this deep, soulful spirituality, not in a woo-woo way, just in like this sort of grasp of life where you're like, oh, okay, you you got the point of this whole thing. Like, I need to listen to you. Um, and it's also about love and falling in love and growing up and family. And it's just about everything. It's just about like how to live your best life almost um, by reading her story and then you'll be completely rooting for her. So, Okay. It's going in my cart. You sold me. And then the paper palace. So I read some reviews today. This one lady, either you love it or hate it. Really? Yes. I, I saw this review today where this person was like, I absolutely did not like this. And that was the first time I've ever seen that because so many other friends have said, Oh, I love the paper palace. And wow. I, I let, you know why I wanted it and I bought it. It's on my shelf here. It's on my to be read list is, is your podcast. You had Miranda, I forgot her name, Miranda, Miranda Kelly. Hello. Yes. And you had her on and I thought, well, that sounds really great. And I bought it and haven't read it yet. And then I heard that review and I was like, what? That's the first time I've heard anything negative. Yeah. Oh, and Paula said, I hear so much love for Paper Palace. Yeah. So now I got to read it because I feel like people are like, how, how could they, how could they like be so across the board on that? You have to decide, like, would you like to go on a journey where you're in Cape Cod in this like sort of beautiful little community, like a kind of waspy community, to be honest, with like, you know, a cheese and crackers kind of vibe, like sand on the floor. And would you like to be the woman who's in this relationship with her husband, pretty happy, like everything's fine, has three grown kids, but then reunites with the love of her life. So she deep down like thought she would be with. And what happens when that spark starts to fly again? She has her happy life, but she has this passion. What should she do? It's about her mom. It's And it all takes place in vivid detail like you are in the lake you are like in the bushes walking to the party and hearing the leaves crunch underfoot like it's so immersive and sensory and experience i love books like that okay i'm probably gonna love it if you like that, you'll like it if you don't if you don't like that type of thing then maybe you won't like it and i know that the ending has um, been controversial ish so i'll just leave it at that so another one that you interviewed was Emily Giffen. Wow, what a humble, beautiful author, huh? In that interview, she kept interviewing you. She was that so was my favorite interview. <laughs> I listened to that and I was like, I just want to be best friends with Emily Giffen too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we were emailing right before this. Like we literally sometimes we just literally become friends. I feel like we talk about all this stuff and it's just great. So that one, I like basically forgot I was interviewing her, but I love her. Um, she wrote this great novel called The Lies That Bind. And 
Um, it takes place over 9-11 and it's about, do you know really the person that you're with? What happens when you don't really have a strong grasp on that? When things come out later, uh, that basically the protagonist, the husband, the, you know, the love interest disappears and she thinks she knows all about him. But when she is searching for him post 9-11, all these other things come up. Um, so it's very interesting and intriguing, more of a, not a, it's not a thriller, but there is more of a mystery component to it. Um, than say the other books. So I, I loved hearing you both talk about 9-11 as New Yorkers because that was just, well, that was a really impactful day. I was actually flying into Philadelphia that at that time. And, um, and when we hit Philadelphia airspace, they turned us around and we'd flown from Puerto Rico and we were sent back. Oh, and, no, to Puerto Rico? Mm-hmm. And when we turned around, because we went from Puerto Rico to Pennsylvania, to Philly, when we got to airspace circling Philly, they came on and said they were taking us back to Puerto Rico. And we're like, what? And they were crying. They were all crying and shaking. And then he came over the loudspeaker and told us what happened. And we're oh. flying. We're flying for another six hours back. No. To and, and it was like, Oh my. And then my favorite part was when the flight attendants came and got me and my husband and they said, since you guys are military, do you think you could help us? And I'm like, Oh, you think we're the adults in the room? We're, we're like 20. Oh my <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we might need some help. And I'm like, with what, what do you think we're going to do? <laughs> it was the most terrifying thing. And then we worked nonstop after that for 12 to 16 hours a day. And it was never the same again. And we ha went back to Puerto Rico and that's where we stayed. We had to stay there. So um, it was like the craziest day. And that was my experience on a weird level. But then hearing your guys's was like, oh my gosh. So if you guys have not, if you guys don't know Zibby, you have to find that podcast with the lies that bind with Emily Giffen. That was just a really great podcast and just took you back to that day. I think we all can remember where we were, what we were doing that day and that was just, and now I want to read the book. It's on my list too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, I'm sorry about you. Oh my gosh. Did you, yeah. have your, did you have your kids with you? I didn't have kids at the time yet. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, right. Now, so I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting like timeline. Yeah. 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 Timeline. Yeah. My oldest is 18, but um, no, we didn't have kids yet. We were just dual military. Um, we were married. We got married really young. And um, yeah, it was just, it was awful. Like when you're that young and they look at you like you're going to help them and you're like, <laughs> where are the other adults in the room? <laughs> well, coming to this. <laughs> no, it's like, yeah. well, let's just pretend that we know what we're doing. <laughs> wow. And then, yeah, wow. such a terrifying thing. But that was a really good episode, too, that you did and loved it. Um, and she seemed just like the most humblest, uh, humble author ever. And so what are some others that you love off the top of your head? I know you mentioned, so, oh, well, you mentioned my Salinger year. Yep. Generally. And that, that just, she's just seems like just the most amazing author. Actually, she recommended to me the book that I just did. Um, I interviewed this author this morning, Everything I Have is Yours by Eleanor Henderson, which, oh my gosh, if you want like to feel like if feeling yeah. is, a, is a goal in a, in a book, right? Like. I had to close this book a few times and just be like, like there's a lot in this, in her real, in her real life story that is almost hard to take. Her husband gets very sick, um, has like a skin issue and also psychiatric illness. And mm. she writes about this so beautifully and so powerfully. Um, it's really, it's really amazing, but it's, you know, it can be hard to take, but like, it's really powerful and good. Wow. Yeah, you guys have to follow Zibby. She, if you follow her on Instagram, she'll link to her podcasts and things like that so you won't miss something and forget. Or you can subscribe to her on the podcast app or on Spotify. Um, how else can they find you? Um, my website is zibbyowens.com and that has like everything. Everywhere. I'm on Goodreads. I'm on Twitter. Everywhere I'm at Zibby Owens pretty much. Um, so yeah, just look for me everywhere. That is awesome. Well, what advice do you have for aspiring writers or moms? You. You're like doing my interview to me. This is what I always ask people at the end. I love it. Um, I learned so much. I'm like, even if you write 
like essays and journal. It's so cathartic. It's important. And it's a legacy for your family. It's really neat. And what you're doing is really cool. I feel like even like writing the essays, you people feel a little less lonely and they can identify with that. It's, it's the imperfectness and not seeing everyone's highlight reel and seeing real life. Yes. Well, I'm all about sort of sharing that, whether I'm talking about, you know, the sadness I feel when my kids go to their, my ex-husband's for vacation or my relationship with my body, or, you know, I'm pretty open about the stuff because I've learned now at almost 45 that if I'm feeling it, like other people are feeling it. So I just, there's nothing that I think or feel that's unique. I'm just able to articulate it and write it. And I feel like if that's the only thing I can contribute to this world, then so be it. That's what I have to do. So um, my advice to aspiring authors um, is that if you are passionate about writing, then everything will come in time. And sometimes you can't force the timing of it, but keep writing, keep pursuing what makes you and your voice unique. Um, meet other authors, connect. I think connecting to others has been one of the most helpful things that I've done and that continues to really sustain me emotionally and everything. Um, so connect to others in the writing community. Um, keep doing your thing, keep learning, keep reading. And um, not a lot of the publishing industry necessarily makes sense. That shouldn't affect your output. So just keep at it. It's writing is a gift and, you know, you should unwrap it. <laughs> I love that. I just came up with it. That needs to go on a, a little quote on Instagram or something. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, would, I might have to make that my thing. I'm yeah. Gonna, I don't know where that, that needs to be. be in your bio or something for sure yeah. for sure awesome well thank you so much for being on the show you guys can follow her like she said at zibby owens it's a pretty unique name so you won't you won't miss her she'll come right up I yes there it is oh i love your notepad <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is and everything <laughs> no i saw you had a i was doing my research on you and i saw your video on your site and i walking around bookstores in new york and i'm like now I want to go to New York. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm actually in LA right now. But Erin, I just want to say you are like the most prepared interviewer ever. <laughs> I loved this conversation. Um, and I just wanted to th tell you how much I appreciate you're doing the work to like get to know me before you even met me. It just makes me feel really good. So thank you. Thank uh -huh. you for doing that. My pleasure. Thank you so much for being on the show and enjoy that sun in LA. Mm -hmm.